This movie is the bestest movie ever because the big monkey punches the big lizard and it makes stuff blow up and that makes my brain do a happy. <laughs> anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now. <laughs> Honestly, trying to do any kind of in-depth breakdown of this movie is a bit like a gourmet food connoisseur writing a 10,000 word review of a doner kebab. Yes, I'm that damn pretentious. Godzilla vs Kong is without doubt one of the most fucking retarded special and unique movies that I've ever seen since, well, Godzilla King of the Monsters. Whatever passes for a plot here could basically be boiled down to Giant Lizard is going around smashing things up. Godzilla's out there and he's hurting people and we don't know why. <laughs> so the tiny humans recruit Giant Monkey to punch Giant Lizard and make him go away. So they run into each other and the Giant Lizard's like, I'm harder than you. And the Giant Monkey's like, no, I'm harder than you. Basically, it's like any two Scottish guys meeting each other for the first time. Then they punch each other for a while until a giant robot lizard shows up. Then they both punch that until it blows up. Then giant lizard and giant monkey make friends and the tiny humans live happily ever after. Basically, this is exactly what I predicted from the trailer. An absolutely brain-dead, nonsensical string of events that exist for no other reason than to set up the big punching match between Big Monkey and Big Lizards. Oh, and for some reason, all the other titans from the end of the last movie are nowhere to be found. I guess they had more important stuff to do. The problem you're always gonna have with monster movies like this is that there's no real way for the human characters to meaningfully interact with such enormous creatures, so the only solution is to give them a kind of movie within a movie all to themselves. Now, a smart screenplay could probably craft an interesting drama featuring a cast of compelling characters set against the backdrop of all-out monster warfare. Unfortunately, Godzilla vs Kong isn't any of those things. Not a single one of the bloated cast of theoretical characters have anything approaching an arc. They're all one-dimensional stereotypes without an ounce of personality, nuance or charisma, and they don't change or develop one iota from beginning to end. The result here is that you end up not giving a shit what any of them are doing, whether they succeed or fail, or even whether they live or die. The main storyline for them involves shady businessmen recruiting geeky science guys to lead an expedition into the core of the earth to recover a magical power source that can defeat Godzilla. And for this, they need Kong to lead the way because apparently he used to live in the center of the earth. Are you serious? Yeah. Yeah, I'm afraid I am. So Geeky Science Guy goes to Skull Island, where beautiful science lady has been studying Kong in a giant holodeck. And she's been using the little girl who's the key to everything to communicate with him through sign language. This is real, this is a thing which is in this movie. So they fly Kong to Antarctica, because apparently you can lift a massive creature weighing thousands of tons using just a few helicopters. And they're joined by shady businessman's daughter and damn she's hot. Sorry I lost my train of thought there. Anyway the movie does everything short of bringing up a rolling ticker tape, warning you that she's going to betray the team the moment she gets what she wants. And to be honest, if you don't figure this out within about 30 seconds of her arrival, then you're probably a character in this film. So Kong leads them down to the centre of the earth, where gravity can flip upside down so you can end up with mountains and lakes right above your heads. I legitimately damaged my brain trying to comprehend the physics behind this, but never mind, they make it to a giant temple and recover a sample of the magical bullshit power source. Who constructed this temple? Why is there a giant axe there for Kong? How is there sunlight down in this place in the centre of the earth? How does any of this stuff function? Don't know. But wouldn't you know it, shady businessman's daughter betrays them and steals the sample so that her dad can finish work on a giant robot lizard to destroy Godzilla. But of course, science inevitably goes too far and the robot lizard gets out of control and tries to kill everyone. So Kong and Godzilla have to team up and stop it. That's the powerful message behind this movie, you see. Human ambition is the real monster here, not the skyscraper sized lizards that can crush entire cities and kill tens of thousands of people just by walking around. Are you serious? I just love how this movie tries to frame the creation of Mecha Godzilla as some kind of evil plot that has to be stopped at all costs, when in reality it's a completely understandable response to an extinction level event. I would absolutely choose an all powerful weapon system that was under my command, rather than just blindly hoping that Godzilla and the other titans don't decide to wipe out the human race. Jesus, if just one of these things gets out of control, it could destroy an entire city and kill millions of people. Ah, fuck it, who even cares?
In my fantastic summary of the trailer, I also predicted that Millie Bobby Brown's storyline would basically boil down to, well, we had to give her something to do. And wouldn't you know it, I was 100% right. She's there to uncover shady businessman's evil plan, for which she enlists the help of her best friend and a conspiracy theorist working as a mole. I love how they track him down within a matter of hours, when apparently the best law enforcement agencies on earth couldn't find him. <coughs> I also love how her friend is literally just there to act like a clueless asshole for the entire movie. And honestly, I thought he was a girl until someone called him Josh. I particularly love how two teenagers and a fat podcaster can infiltrate multiple high security compounds without anyone noticing them, because I guess surveillance cameras, biometric security, armed patrols and fucking locked doors just aren't a thing in this universe. Don't worry though, some characters don't even have a purpose in this movie at all. Like Millie Bobby Brown's dad, who basically gets shuttled from place to place and plays absolutely no role in the story. Or beautiful science lady, whose only function is to manage the little girl who's the key to everything. Damn, she doesn't even get a romance with geeky science guy. Not that you'd want to see it anyway, that guy's a fucking black hole of charisma that seems to be scared of everything, including personal greetings. Anyway, this stuff's all pretty much irrelevant. You don't watch a Godzilla movie for the compelling storylines, you want to see monsters blow shit up and, well, the movie certainly delivers on that over and over again. Seriously, some of these fights go on for so long that you almost forget why they started and it just becomes exhausting to watch after a while. It's just a CGI monkey punching a CGI lizard with no real physical damage to either one of them. I keep comparing this to other CGI battle movies like Pacific Rim, but the difference there is that the human Jaegers took some real punishment so there was at least a sense that something was at stake. Here I really didn't know who was winning or losing because neither creature does anything except get knocked down for a while, and pretty soon I didn't particularly care one way or the other. Also, it's kind of weird how they move in ponderous slow motion under normal circumstances, but when it's time to fight, they suddenly become as fast and agile as a pair of wild dogs. I get they want to make the fight scenes more fast-paced and interesting than watching a pair of oil tankers bumping into each other, but it just destroys the sense of epic destruction for me. Basically what I'm saying here is that the movie delivers all the CGI spectacle you could ever ask for, but there's no real weight or significance to any of it. It's just a bunch of pretty images on screen, and some of them even look kind of spotty if I'm honest. And when there's nothing really at stake, it's hard to care about what you're watching. The movie also kind of glosses over the fact that tens of thousands of innocent people are dying as a result of this shit. Damn, at one point they end up sinking an aircraft carrier by using it as a wrestling ring, and there's not even a throwaway line about the thousands of sailors who just took a one-way trip to the bottom of the ocean. The intention with this movie was clearly to just embrace the insanity of the monsterverse and not care too much about the details. And to be honest, I don't think that was entirely the wrong decision. The first Godzilla movie was bogged down by a heavy, ponderous storyline that tried way too hard to conjure up a serious drama and instead just killed the fun in the process. Godzilla vs Kong represents the very opposite end of the spectrum. It's big and dumb and it doesn't make a lick of sense. It never once stops to question or explain explain any of the nonsense that's going on, and it certainly doesn't apologise for any of it. The only problem is that they threw away everything else in the process. By having a plot that makes no sense, filled with characters you couldn't give a shit about, and battle scenes that are just big monsters punching each other for 90 minutes, the movie really doesn't give you much incentive to get invested. And I can't help but think there's a good middle ground they could have found here. It's perfectly possible to have a big dumb monster movie that still manages to make you care about what's happening, but it depends on crafting fun, interesting characters caught up in an intriguing storyline. In this case, Godzilla vs Kong really is just a big dumb monster movie and absolutely nothing else. Whether that's enough to keep you entertained, well, it's up to you. Anyway, that really is all I've got for today. Go away now.